Well, here we go. And today's video is about survival shopping, shopping for survival. In case of an apocalypse, I know we're not having an apocalypse, but this coronavirus, the COVID-19, is heading down that road. Yes, heading down that road. Now, what you need to do to survive, it's absolutely manic at the moment in Tesco's and Asda, in Sainsbury's, in all the big stores. And before you see it, it's not a Sainsbury's court. Everyone keeps, everyone keeps confusing this court with the Sainsbury's court. I don't work at Sainsbury's. I haven't purchased the Sainsbury's court when I went to Sainsbury's, but you need to purchase some survival gear just in case of an emergency. At this moment, it's absolutely pandemonium out there. It's absolutely crazy. Everybody's going mad, panic, buying and setting in. Everybody's out there buying the hundreds of toilet rolls, all of the bread, all of the cans and beer. Now that the government have shut down clubs and pubs, everybody is out there panic buying their alcohol. Now what I noticed on Thursday when I was going into Tesco's, there was nothing in the freezer and the frozen aisle was totally wiped out. The alcohol aisle was completely wiped out. People were going down the alcohol, alcohol aisle, alcohol aisle, Looking for cans, there was no cans there. They had the phones out, they were recording and showing the partners, there's no cans for you. We can't buy any cans. But unknown to them, a few aisles down, there was a big cage full of whoops items. And there was, you know, 10 cans of Thatchers for seven pound. There was 10 cans of Fosters for seven pound. And everybody was panic buying down the alcohol aisle and these lovely jubbly items all going cheap as chips. So yes, I went and purchased 10 cans of Thatcher's at a reduced price of £7.20. Absolute bargain. Who doesn't like Thatcher's? A bit of cider. That's going away in case of a shutdown or close down. In case the government decides to absolutely you know keep you at home unless you have a job what suits them like you know the food industry they're going to be fine the police the firemen the wonderful nhs do an absolutely fantastic job at this moment in time 111 doing brilliant taking in the calls the doctors and nurses absolutely fantastic stuff if i missed anybody else off i do apologize because they have to look after us they have to take care of the elderly the elderly are the ones and the people who have underlying illnesses are the ones who will be affected by this deadly virus now what people are forgetting about what people are forgetting about is let's say for instance we end up like italy italy have had the most deaths over 4,000 deaths, over 40,000 people down with the virus. It's lockdown. Italy is on lockdown. Now, the wonderful people who, you know, your waterworks, your gas and electric people, who fix these utilities when they go down, we all know, we all know of a time in your house in the past where the electric has gone off. It's gone off and it's been off for a day. It's been off for 20 hours. If it goes over 24 hours, you can put a claim in electricity board so they try and get out there as quick as possible but what happens in COVID-19 kicks in and some of these people are poorly some of these people are isolated they're isolated and what happens if it goes down two different villages you could be without electric or gas or even water for days so you need to find a way to survive now so you need to buy for me first thing I've bought and now I've purchased a few of these but Vanilla candles, it doesn't have to be vanilla candles, any candles will do. But I purchased all sorts of candles, you know, and if we don't have to use these items and we actually combat and beat the deadly disease, we can give them away as, as birthday presents. You know, a member of the family, a, a lady in your family who likes candles, there's your birthday present coming up, you know, or even a Christmas box. Already bought, paid for a Christmas box. I know it's only $3.99 for BM, but it could be a part present if I don't have to use it. Touch wood, I won't have to use it. But if my electric goes out, I've got no lights at night, I can put a candle on. You need your matches to go with it. And Bob's your uncle, they're absolutely sorted. So don't forget to have some candles kicking about somewhere in your house. Also with candles, you need a good torch. So I went to B&Q and I bought a nice 15 pound lantern. Look at that beauty, works straight away. 
Absolutely fantastic. There we go. You can carry that around. You can go into the garage with no, with no light on, no electricity. Pop in the garage, get the tools you need, the fixed bits and pieces in the house. Or you can walk from bedroom to bedroom, go to the bathroom, and not, you know, make sure you actually hit the toilet when you go to the bathroom because you have a nice, you have a nice torch sitting next to the toilet. There you go. You can do your, your business in peace, knowing you've got a nice candle. And don't forget to get some batteries to go with it, some spare batteries, because these batteries never last very long. Rechargeable batteries are okay, recharge, but you can't recharge them after because there's no electricity. Remember, a torch and candles, and you need to do that because who can, you can't go around in the dark. Now, like I said, if the water goes down, and clearly you're not going to be able to get a bath or a shower, but you do need to survive, you do need to drink water. You can't just rely on alcohol alone. You need to drink water. But if the worst comes to the worst, there's always something in the back shelf. I mean, a bottle of QC won't go amiss. Just to keep the spirits up, but you do need your water as well. So, I popped in the supermarket only for two pound, a nice eight pack. I have two or three of these kicked away somewhere just in case the apocalypse, sorry, sorry, the virus does spread. And the people, the great people who fix your pipes out there, who keep the water flowing, are down and they're ill and they cannot leave their house because they're isolated for 14 days. What are you going to do? You need to survive. Go and purchase your water while you've still got a chance before the lockdown. You have plenty of water, you've got loads and loads of candles and torches, what else do you need to do to survive? You need to have plenty of food kept away in the cupboard, but don't go overboard, don't panic buy, don't go and buy, you know, three months worth of food, you don't need to do that. If it is locked down, you'll be allowed to go to the supermarket, it'll be in an orderly fashion, the police will be there, maybe it's the army will be kicking around in some places, so it'll be a lot more organised. Don't panic by now, there'll be loads in the supermarkets. The shops will be stacked to the brim. You'll be walking in, you know, single file, you know, in a, in a proper, you know, organized fashion. And this, all the shelves, there'll be toilet rolls all over the place. There'll be plenty of food in the freezers, plenty of alcohol, plenty of water, plenty of bread, plenty of tinned goods. There'll be lots of that kicking about because it will be organized, organized by the government. So, but if the electric goes down or your gas goes down and you can't cook any food, what are you going to do if you haven't got an open fireplace or you haven't got a barbecue in the back garden? What can you do? Well, I've been out to the local DIY store in Langley Park, absolutely fantastic local hardware store. It is a brilliant shop. It has every single thing you need and I've purchased A yellow stone, portable gas store for only 15 pounds. And to go with it, I got me four bottles of butane gas, four cartridges that'll last in emergency. And don't forget, we do go camping, people go camping. So at some point in the future, I could possibly go camping and that is there, purchased, put to one side, I will use it. And if for whatever reason, I don't use it, we all have people who like to go happy, happy camping in the family, another birthday present of a Christmas box, all sorted out. Money never gets wasted in this house. Now I haven't gone overboard, I've just been out there and I've bought enough for the family, you know, bits and pieces. I've got me, me tomato sauce at the back, you can see, yes, that, that, that's a necessity tomato sauce. I've got me oils, I've got me soups, I've got me wheat of bix I've got me, you know, me ham just in case, me tins of peas, I've got me two packs of tuna, I've got a, a pack of pasta back there, some nice nana bread, and I've got plenty of, you know, broccolis, I've got me beans, I've got me peel, I've got me tomatoes, I've got me sausages and beans, so that there will probably last two, two weeks. That's all you need to have in the house. You don't need to panic buy and have a whole spare bedroom full of food. That there will do me nicely with the kids. And then again, in the fridge, not overboard, just bits and pieces, couple of cans up there, orange juice, you got your sarnies from a party, from a relative, absolutely fantastic relative, you know, I hope, I hope she has a great birthday, 
some spare party food. Unfortunately, we couldn't have a party because of the situation, but you know, absolutely wonderful relatives still come round and give the family some party food. Absolutely, I hope she has a fantastic time. And there you go, you've got some nice grapes, you've got your bacon, and you've got your nice veg and fruit. We all need some fruit. Lovely tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, a bit of broccoli when I make lasagna tonight. Absolutely lovely. There you go, not overboard. A couple of bottles of water up there just for spare. But that's all you need. You don't need to panic buy. No, don't panic buy whatsoever. So there we have Yellowstone portable gas, gas stove. Let's have a look inside. Let's get it opened up. There you go. Always read the instructions. Always read the instructions very carefully. Let's take out the pan. Let's move the packaging away. And there we have. Nice portable gas stove. Now, I'll turn this around so you can see. You have to open that, and that's where the gas goes. Now, whenever you get a gas bottle, a brut butane, take off the lid, and there you have a little attachment there. Now that goes, it says somewhere on here, I should see it this way up. Just put it in. That's to go inside. I'm going to show you the hole. Just goes inside that there. So there you have the gas in place. It fits in like so, as you can see. That there will be forced into that and then it can't move, so it's locked into place. And you lock it into place by pushing down the button at the front. So when the, the butane bottle gas canister is in, close it. Make sure it's closed, like so. Now we turn it around, and at the front, you can see. I have to turn that all the way till it clicks into place. Push this down first to lock the, that there locks it in place. So now the can is completely locked. Locked in place, it won't move, like so. Then you have to basically turn that all the way around to hear a click, then it will light. There we go. Then you just control how much you want, how big the flame, by turning it around, like so. And that keeps it. Put your, put your pan on, put your kettle on, and Bob's your uncle. You switch it off, turn it all around, turn it off, unlock it, open it up, remove it, and always put the cap back on, sealed, put it somewhere safe, and that's how simple and easy it is to use a small portable gas stove. Now I said before, I purchased that for £15. So there you have it, I've never used a gas stove, camping stove in my life. I've never been camping out in the big old wide world and I've never used one of those. And it is absolutely simple and easy to use. You just remove that, put it in, clip it down, turn it around, heat ignition, click, lights up, switch it off, take it out, unlock it, put that back on, keep that somewhere safe and sound. And that is the beauty of that. Absolutely fantastic. £15 and £7 for the canisters, for the bottles. Done a bit wonky there. Back in place. Absolutely fantastic. I'll put that away somewhere safe and sound only for an emergency. Only if the electric and gas goes off and I ha cannot heat any food. You can heat your beans on there, cups of tea, soup. You can make your meals. You know, if you've got kids, you've got to be able to feed them hot food. So there you go. Delicious. Fantastic food you can cook on this lovely Yellowstone portable gas cooker. Now, I went to b and I heard they were in B&M, they were completely sold out. They were sold out in Argos, they were sold out in Tesco's. I went a few places and they were completely sold out. But there is your local hardware stores that do have these in their store and easy to purchase and easy to use. A good necessity in a time of apocalypse or 
times of trouble, like this moment in time, this awful, you know, COVID-19 virus. So there we go, in times of need, in this moment in time for survival. That is my shopping survival kit. That is what you need. It's easy to get, easy to purchase. They're all over the shops, plenty of water everywhere you go, plenty of alcohol. That's not survival, but you've got your candles, your torches. You may have those in your house already from previous occasions. And if you don't use these products, you can always give them away for gifts, you know, so you're going to always reuse them, or should we say, we're going to always, you know, give them away at Christmas, give them away at, you know, birthday presents. There's always, you can always do something with all these different things, apart from the water, which you know you're going to drink anyway. So that's my survival shopping guide. If you like it, please subscribe to the channel. Please give it a like. And tomorrow, I will have my toilet roll song. Just for a laugh. Just try and brighten everybody up, make everybody happy on this dark, dismal time when, you know, there's nothing open. You've got no cinemas open. You've got no gyms open. You've got no theatres. No football matches. Not any sporting events at all. The only sporting event that hasn't been cancelled is the Olympic Games at this moment in time because the Japanese do not want to lose billions and that may go ahead. There's no football all of April at all and I'd be surprised if it even gets kicked off in May. And one last thing, always have something in the house to defend yourself, protect yourself. And you know, in these wild and wicked times, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if the crime rate, rate will rise. In these awful situations, there's always nasty, horrible people out there who take advantage of the situation. If it's on lockdown, everyone's in their own houses, then hopefully we should be safe and sound. But if you've got to leave your house, you know, unattended, Hopefully someone be looking out for you because, you know, there's always someone out there who wants to take advantage of the situation. Please, please, please. You know, I'm praying there's not. Hopefully we'll all get through this safe and sound with as little debts as possible because it is hitting the weak and vulnerable and it's, it's a nasty, nasty virus. And I'm sure Boris and his party will find some sort of antidote. You know, we'll give... NHS and the wonderful scientists out there the money to go and do whatever it takes to get an antidote for this virus so we are all safe and sound. Most of us who get it will survive but we all have elderly parents, we all have elderly relatives who we have to you know keep safe and sound. Their lives are important. We need to make sure they stay safe and sound. But if you do live with a young family on your own, that is my survival shopping kit. That is what I've got. That is what I think you's out there could purchase. Some of them, not all of them. But, you know, I watch too much of The Walking Dead, too much of The Zed Nation, too much of Fear the Walking Dead, too many Dawns of the Dead, Days of the Dead, and The Evil Dead to think that one day there may be an apocalypse, if not a zombie apocalypse. And I've got my good old trusty golf club upstairs standing alongside the baseball bat just in case someone decides to have a look around my house when they shouldn't. Right, we'll see you later. Hopefully you'll all stay safe and sound and watch out tomorrow for the toilet roll song.